Hi, I'm Brendan with the leaderboard, and today we're going out to sea to visit a combination restaurant prison. Yeah, you heard that correctly. We're talking about the maw and all that goes on inside, so be ready to have your appetite ruined by those creepy twin chefs, because we've got 107 facts about little nightmares. Seriously, hold off on eating during this. Let's get started. <laughs> Little Nightmares was released worldwide on April 28th, 2017. Players control Six as she ventures to escape the Maw, a mysterious vessel that caters to powerful and disgusting creatures. The game also had a special edition released, which comes with a 10 centimeter figure of Six, the soundtrack of the game, a preview of an upcoming comic, exclusive poster, sticker board, as well as a cage themed box for the game. Tarshier Studios, the Swedish team behind Little Big Planet Vita, originally announced Little Nightmares in 2014, but it was known as Hunger at the time. The game did not have a publisher then, but it was known that it would be released on the PS4. The initial prototype of the game was funded by Creative Europe and Nordic Game after Tarshier submitted documents and artwork for the concept. This prototype allowed Tarshier to shop the game around and eventually get a larger company's attention. In 2016, Bandai Namco announced that they were going to publish the game and that it would be coming to Xbox One, PS4, and PC. This is also when the new official title, Little Nightmares, was announced. Dennis Talayic, lead designer of Little Nightmares, has said his inspiration for the game was found from many places, but the especially looked at Studio Ghibli movies and The City of Lost Children. The City of Lost Children was a film released in 1995 starring Ron Perlman. It was about a society that kidnapped children to steal their dreams and extend their own lifespans. Similarities can be seen in the denizens of the Maw and their evil desires, as they too try to exploit children. Generally, the concept and creation of the game stemmed from a concept jam session where the art director created a small skinny character in a bright yellow raincoat and illustrated creatures around her. The energy that came from the relationship between the characters interested them, and the project began. Mervic has said that the core themes of the original concept revolved around food, greed, and consumption, and that led them to the original title of Hunger. Once the team delved further into the game, they realized they wanted to explore further themes, like primal fears in childhood, hence the new title, Little Nightmares. One of the other key reasons for the name change from Hunger to Little Nightmares is because of the pop culture phenomenon known as the Hunger Games. The team knew it would be tough for people looking for information on the game, as typing Hunger Game wouldn't be effective. If you played the game without looking at any of the marketing, you wouldn't know six his name or that the Maw is located on an underwater ship. The entire story is told through the visual media in the game, but if you pay attention to your surroundings, you'll notice that the areas sway and the furniture gently rocks with the motion of the waves. Dave Mervick, narrative designer for Little Nightmares, has said that they specifically designed the game with a quality over quantity mentality in regards to the length of the game, as it was the company's first original IP. Fellow Nordic company Playdead has released games similar to Little Nightmares in the past, specifically Limbo and Inside. Mervick joked that perhaps dark and morbid storytelling might just be a Nordic thing. The developers avoided labeling the gameplay style as stealth, as it implies that the character is empowered. They prefer hide and seek. Instead of jump scares and gore, the game relies on an oppressive atmosphere to provide the tension it needs to make players feel uneasy. Using their experience working on Little Big Planet, they were able to accentuate the tactility of Little Nightmares, as Six is able to move, grab, and climb on most objects. In fact, three of the four level designers on the project were taken from the Little Big Planet level designing community. It's a good thing, too, because Asger Christensen chief designer of Little Nightmares, noted that the beginning of the game was remade completely three to four times before it felt right. Though it is a 3D game, the camera angle is locked off to a dollhouse perspective, which is made to emulate the player watching what is going on in this world as an observer. Christensen wants players to be able to experience some discomfort while playing, but doesn't want you too creeped out. He believes the game is not a horror game, which you may think at first glance, but more of a suspenseful adventure game. Tarshier Studios designed and developed the game to have a strong experience with authorial intent, but they wanted to leave it open-ended enough to have each individual who plays the game to give it a unique meaning to them. So unlike most games on the market, you do not begin the game with a tutorial. Trial and error will have you learning exactly how to help Six survive this immense experience. Not only did Tarshier want to deliver a strong single-player experience, they wanted to ensure players would get a sense of loneliness and vulnerability while playing. That's why there's no co-op for the game. The developers limited the amount of cutscenes because they wanted the players to have as much control as possible. They wanted each player to be responsible for their actions in the game. With this in mind, Tarshier Studios avoided graphic death animations because they felt that being vague about what happens to Six when she's captured leaves your imagination free to run wild. The size disparity between Six and her environment was done to emphasize how children see things. What Six is experiencing is real to her, but may not be the whole truth. Six's design, including a raincoat, was established to stand out against the designs of everything else in the game. The developers want you to understand that she does not belong in this place. Many fans find that Six's raincoat is reminiscent of the protagonist of Lycus feature film debut 
debut, Coraline, which was based on the book written by Neil Gaiman. In fact, members of Tarshier Studios wore yellow hoodies to GamesCon 2016 to coincide with the official reveal of Little Nightmares. Aww. While some of the material on the Little Nightmares website notes that Six is a girl, Tarshier Studios recently said that they do not have an answer to which gender Six belongs to. Six's main item, other than her wonderfully sunny raincoat, is a lighter. Even with the lighter illuminating the area around her, the path ahead of Six is shrouded in a viscous darkness. Tarshier knew that player transference, the psychological or emotional component of a game that provides an instinctive reaction in the player, would kick in when playing as Six, as everyone was once a sometimes fearful child. The Maw is an iceberg-like structure that appears around the world. According to the game's official site, the Maw arrives every year at the same time, but never in the same place mysterious. The world outside of the Maw has been developed, as it was necessary to create it to find out what kind of world would need the Maw in the first place, but the team won't reveal anything about it yet. Come on, guys! Supposedly, this world is chaotic, and believe it or not, the Maw is the only stable thing that makes sense. The Maw is already pretty crazy on its own, so this outside world sounds intriguing. It attracts guests by promising to fulfill their various desires. Unfortunately for them, once they board the boat, they're never seen again. The Maw is filled with these guests, and with prisoners like Six, but there are those that call the Maw home. Six's main enemies are these people who inhabit the Maw and keep it running. The four different bosses in the game include the janitor, the twin chefs, the guests, and the lady. Which one scares you the most? During Gamescom 2016, there was another creature in the cast which fans have dubbed the Bellhop. He was seemingly cut from the game since. Who could he have been? The janitor that chases Six is blind. His face is wrapped with bandages with only his mouth and teeth exposed. Be careful not to let him get too close. His arms are not proportional to his size and he has a long reach. His his arms were almost shortened to normal size as the team had issues with his elbows clipping through doors and walls. To alleviate the issue, a special animation was created to allow him to tuck his elbows in whenever he's close to something. The janitor's character bio notes that he fled from the world to go join the Maw. What could have been so bad about the outside world that led him to such an evil place? The twin chefs, enemies Six will run into during her escape, are obsessed with their work. They love what they do, but Six will need to be wary or she might just end up a new ingredient in one of their dishes. As Six wanders around the dining area where the guests are at, they will attempt to grab her and stuff her into their mouths. Eventually, you'll be chased by guests who topple over and crawl along the floor as they look for their next snack you. The lady's magic is unknown, but according to the official site's bio page, her hypnotic spell is what allows Ma's engine to continue running. The lady, the final antagonist of the game, is seen multiple times throughout the story. She's featured in the opening sequence during Six's dream slash nightmare, she's shown watching the guests make their way towards their meals, and she is seen in the final chapter as she goes head to head with Six. The resident AI utilizes a few different abilities to track Six as you venture throughout the Maw. For going a detection radius, the enemies employ a peripheral vision angle calculation to determine whether the player can be seen from the eyes of the AI. The physics system that allows enemies to grab Six is called iKinema, which calculates a convincing looking movement that's needed to connect with Six, no matter where she is. Normally, iKinema is used to plant a character's feet on the ground, allowing the designer to pose a character's legs, hips, and body more easily. In addition to visual detection, the enemies react to the player's sound when the system calculates the physical distance from the sound to the enemy and decides if they hear it. Once enemies have noticed Six, they will use things like last known position, last last heard sounds and predicted sound location to search for the player. Players can decide how they're going to approach a situation with one of the denizens of the Maw, such as the chef. Will you whistle to draw their attention to another area, or will you chance slamming the oven door and running to a spot to hide? Speaking of, the small gnome creatures aren't exactly unfriendly, but can alert enemies to Six's presence, so be careful when exploring. Gnomes are known for being skittish, but some still try to make friends with the strangers they meet. This innocence leads to a lot of unnecessary deaths. While Six cannot pick up or use weapons, she can pick up other objects to toss, such as the cute gnomes. Oh, don't hurt the gnomes. Be wary while exploring. Leeches can be hiding in the darkness ready to spring onto you. This will, of course, kill you as well. Six's movement, jumping, balancing, and climbing to open doors were specifically designed to feel playful. Although the situation is dire, the team wanted the joy of movement and interacting with the world to be important. The movement of the Maw was also considered with great detail, as too much could potentially cause motion sickness for the player. They experimented with different levels of intensity, creating storms that could create violence motions, and even tried scenes without it. When deciding the direction they would take when animating the game, Tarshier Studios had one initial rule, avoid Pixar-like animation. They did not want a perfect fluid motion for their game and opted for a different and darker style. Matthias Jorensen, an animator for the game, felt this non-perfect motion would create a sense of eeriness. That said, the final scene where you see the guests eating was animated by Matthias Jorensen. He made sure the eating animation and food animation were in sync. This wasn't done dynamically as to save time and not have to program the physics for one 
on scene. Sound design on the project was key. They wanted to find the perfect balance to give the project the ambience it needed through the use of music, the lack of music, and environmental sounds. The team spent a lot of time trying to find good meat sound effects because it was central to the theme of the game. Tobias Lilia, the audio director of Little Nightmares, sought to blur the line between musical elements and environmental sounds, using heavily processed recordings of acoustic instruments such as music box, trombone, accordion, and vocals, and blending them with the sounds of the game world, such as the crease of the ship. This gave them all the creepy yet dreamlike ambience the team was looking for. The game can be completed in anywhere from four to six hours according to the developers. They know it can be raced through in just a few hours, but they don't want you to miss out on any details. For those who have already beaten the game, or just love speedrunning in general, speedruns have the game down to just 45 minutes. The current record for PC clocks in at 41 minutes and 27 seconds, and the console record is at 43 minutes and 47 seconds. Think you can beat it? Little Nightmares will have a three-part expansion titled Secrets of the Maw, which will release by chapter starting in July. The DLC will follow the Runaway Kid, another prisoner of the Maw, as he attempts his escape. The first chapter slated for release is titled The Depths, where the Runaway Kid explores the murky, watery depths of the Maw to escape from a new horrible threat, the Granny. The second chapter, The Hideaway, is aimed to be released in November and will feature a machine-themed section where the gnomes reside. Finally, we might be able to learn more about the gnomes and why they're on the Maw since they're so docile and innocent compared to the evil guests. The third and final chapter of Secrets of the Maw will be released in January 2018. The only information we have so far on the final chapter is the final chapter will decide the fate of the Runaway Kid. Hopefully the Runaway Kid can survive till then. While it's recommended that players tackle the DLC in the order of their release, each of the chapters can be played out of order. However, when played in order, you'll be able to see how the kid's journey affects sixes. Hints of this in the main game include investigating the prison area where you can find a room that has a door open. The room is covered in handprints and has a painting of a massive eye on the wall. It's theorized that this room is the runaway kid's room. Six also runs into a cloth line already hanging from a vent, allowing her access to a shaft that would otherwise be inaccessible. It's likely that this line was dropped by the runaway. In the first chapter, Six discovers a man, at least it's believed to be a man, who has seemingly hung himself. Many hope we learn more about that mystery in the DLC via Kids Root. It wouldn't be an adventure game without collectibles and trophies. Here are a few. Finding the 13 different gnomes to hug throughout the game will earn you the Little Lost Things achievement. Expanding on this, as the game ends, Six will see all the gnomes that she hugged in the game. How many did you see? Alternatively, you can pick up and smash 10 different statues to earn the Rascal achievement. A bit reminiscent of the Zelda games, right? There are a total of 20 candles and lanterns for Six to light throughout her journey using her trusty lighter. Lighting 13 of them will net you the light up your life trophy. Did you ever get in trouble jumping on the bed as a kid? Well, here it's encouraged, as you'll get the highly sprung achievement for jumping on any bed in the game at least six times. Little Nightmares has a total of 13 trophies at this time, and the hardest challenge is hard to the core, which requires you to beat the whole game in under an hour with zero deaths. Time to flex those gaming fingers and grab a hearty snack, you'll probably be there for a while. The ending of the game is purposefully vague and left open-ended for the player's interpretation. It's not surprising then that theories about the true story of the game range from genocide of beautiful people, to containing an ever-hungry god, to just plain old family drama. Here are some other observations and theories that people have come up with. Six wakes up inside of a suitcase in the bowels of the Maw. It's never explained how she gets there, but due to photos taped on the inside of the suitcase, many believe she's been living there for a while and escaped from something deadly. Why? Well, the children's playroom has electric bars on the doorway. Seems like the denizens of the Maw want children to be on the vessel, but they absolutely do not want them wandering. Others notice that the janitor takes what looks like the wrapped bodies of dead children and places them on a hook attached to a conveyor belt. Could the children be the meat the guests are eating? The children as meat for the guest theory has solid evidence when you get to the kitchen area, as Six finds many bloody body bags and eventually many empty bloody body bags before entering the area where the chefs are preparing food. Because the lady wears a mask and has various paintings covered throughout her area, it feels like she is hiding something. The rumors among the community are that she might be related to Six. We hope the DLC might clear this up. There are also paintings of a young girl around around her quarters, which is one of the main pieces of evidence that the community believes confirms the connection between Six and Lady. But if we never see Six's face or get an answer from the developers, we'll never know for sure. While the chef's faces are droopy and have a melted quality to them, some people believe that the faces they're wearing are simply masks. The evidence is that when one of the chefs is butchering meat, he lifts the area under his chin and scratches under it. During this, it looks as if there are two completely different areas of the skin. The eye cameras throughout the game can turn Six into stone, with little bits of black flecks appearing around around her if she is caught in their light for too long. The lady has a similar power when she catches you in her quarters, with the black flecks appearing. This is similar to one of the final cutscenes of the game, with all the black specks energy radiating from certain characters. What kind of magic is this? Is it even magic? During Six's campaign, there's a shadowy creature locked behind a bulkhead that you'll see briefly through its glass.
glass hatch. If the runaway kid story takes place slightly before Six's, he may have to contend with this creature and lock it in that room. As the game progresses, Six has hunger pains that she solves by eating a scripted item during the story. Each time she does this, she eats something bigger and bigger. Six's evolution can be documented through what she eats as the game goes on. The further in the game you are, the darker her feeding gets. Whenever Six eats, a shadowy form can be seen in the background of the scene. Some players believe that this is the manifestation of evil within Six, or even an evil doppelganger. Six is given bread by an unknown person through a barred cafeteria area. Could this be the runaway kid, or is there another person on Six's side? There are only two mirrors in the game that are not broken during Six's journey. One is a one-way mirror that Six can break, and the other is her only weapon against the lady. The team did have a conversation about the end of the game relating to certain political situations occurring in the world right now, but it was only during the original concept ideas. Mervic has said, if there are real-world parallels to be drawn, that's something we should maybe try to fix, as he wants the player to be fully immersed in the game. Prior to the game's release, there was a little Nightmares-themed dinner event. The venue was decorated to match the atmosphere and setting of the game, and among the dishes served were reindeer filet, club, and heart. Sounds delicious. On April 11th, a recipe was posted to the Little Nightmares website from the chef's cookbook for pastries shaped like six, the in-game leeches, gnomes, and the all-seeing eye scattered throughout the game. Just before Christmas in 2016, the development team released a video detailing how to make the Maw Xmas cake. It consisted of matcha mousse, raspberry jelly, a sponge cake, and a chocolate dome. Let the festivities begin. An interactive demo was available prior to launch that provided a Tengu mask for Six once the game was released. Coinciding with the release of Little Nightmares, costumes based on Six, the gnomes, and various other characters were available as a downloadable pack for Little Big Planet 3. Of course, Tarsier's history with LBP made this a perfect match. Little Nightmares has a comic adaptation published by Titan Comics. The first issue was released digitally and physically on May 31st, 2017. So what are you waiting for? Go read it. The series seems to expand upon the lore of the game, and there seem to be other raincoat-wearing children present. Who are these kids and how do they factor into the story? I guess the four-part miniseries will reveal these mysteries. The first issue will have five different covers to choose from. It's really cool that you get to pick the one that suits your vision of Little Nightmares best. If you can't get enough of Little Nightmares, it will soon be coming to your TV. The series was picked up for an adaptation on June 12th, 2017, though it'll take a little while before we can happily view the show. The series will be developed and executive produced by the Russo brothers, Anthony and Joe Russo, who are currently working on Avengers Infinity War. They'll be teaming up with DJ2 Entertainment, which is also adapting Life is Strange into a live action series, and Sonic the Hedgehog is a feature film. The pilot episode will be directed by Henry Selick. Selick is an Academy Award nominated director who worked on The Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, and James and the Giant Peach. Could this mean the show will be stop motion? I hope so. Mervic did note that the game has been well received and people are asking for more. If the company does get to make another game in the Little Nightmares universe, they would look into potentially making it longer, but only if the story dictated it. Sounds like they might be thinking about it. The developers have been repeatedly asked about whether the game will be ported to the Switch at some point, but they've noted that nothing is scheduled so far. Fear not, Switch owners, that could change, maybe? Um... Well, I mean, I hope. And there you have it! Once again, I'm Brendan, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Little Nightmares. Did it give you nightmares? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.